They did it! They finally did it! Hey everybody, welcome to Halo RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, and if there's uh, one thing I didn't expect to get all kinds of excited about today, it'd be just a common little single axle bunkhouse camper. But look at this! So, we actually have a full video of a 184 BS, which is the model we're looking at today from Jayco, but in their totally almost like conventional series. What we're looking at here is the very upgraded STX edition plus. This one is the first we've been able to see with something I've been begging for from manufacturers for years. A sofa in the slide with a free floating table to eat at instead of a dinette. Somebody finally did it. Thank you, Jayco. And I really would love a lot of feedback on this one. Um, I'm gonna go through, and since we already have some footage of this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to really show you where this one stands out and is different from the base model. And of course, we're gonna touch on a couple critical things along the way, but let me know, like, watch this. I'm gonna leave you a link in the video description where you can see a more conventional uh, 184BS and leave me some feedback. Let me know, what do you like? Uh, which one would you go with if your money was on the line? That's what I would really like to know. And um, if you have any questions, anything I haven't answered, any concerns, let us know that kind of stuff too. I'd, I'd love to get all the feedback I can on this because the STX thing is new, the sofa thing is new. And even though it's the same floor plan as we've seen before, it feels like they've created a totally different camper here. So I'm actually up here on the bed right now, in case you're curious, I took my shoes off so I'm not trampling all over someone else's mattress at some point because I feel like this is a little bit better way to kind of start on the uh, the sofa situation over here because normally this floor plan would have a dinette over here in that slide out. And there's nothing wrong with that dinette. It's got some cool storage below it and whatnot. It could fold down into a sleeper, but that's one of the things that I kind of like uh, about this. This floor plan is very commonly chosen by people who maybe have a small family because obviously we have a pair of bunks back there. But there's a lot of people who choose a floor plan like this because uh, it's just one person or two people and they want the extra cargo space that those bunks provide. And that's where I think this sofa's really cool. And what's funny is, and my, my friends at Jago are probably gonna slap themselves in the face, I almost think they did too much with it, which is <laughs> kind of funny. Because they, I mean, it looks like a normal sofa. What you don't realize until you look really close is that it's actually just a jackknife sofa on top of that slide box that goes over the wheel well. Uh, because you look at this and you start thinking, man, can I throw a theater seat or something in there? You don't realize, oh, we have a guest. Hey, Josh, it's raining. Here's an umbrella for you. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. What a guy. Hey, I tell you what, just, uh, well, Brandon, what's your extension, man? 1023. Extension 1023. There you go. We're going to put the shout out to Brandon for bringing me an umbrella on a rainy day. That is awesome because, frankly, I thought it was going to be a, a, a wet walk up. How's that for service? That's not even a customer. That's just just service service. <laughs> oh, I forgot to turn a light on up in that slide box like an idiot. Anyway, what I was getting at here is this is now a very comfortable, cuddle compliant little couch situation, but you still have a place to eat. Because stowed away by, behind that thing, we have just a simple folding leg, free floating Dinofa table. When I talk all the time about taking a, a pedestal dinette and converting it into a free floating table, that's exactly what I mean right there. Because they're small, they're light, they're portable, you can take them outside. And just like in this one, when you're not using it, you can just stuff it back there behind the sofa. Now, when you see this instead of a dinette, it looks like a two-person dining. When you hear dinette, you think for people. Like, we're used to sliding into a booth at a restaurant, you know? When you're in a little camper like this, you'll be lucky to get an adult and a kid on each side of the dinette. Now, this floor plan notwithstanding, because when it's in a slide like this, they can afford a little bit deeper dinette. But, if you notice, they left your room over here. You just bring a couple little, like, folding stools or something like that. Something that doesn't eat up a lot of cargo space. You could actually put the whole family around this or have some friends over and play cards on a rainy day or something like that. But most dinettes by default are really not going to fit in a little camper like this. Let me preface that. Are really not going to fit more than one or two people at a time anyway. So I don't really know that you've lost a whole lot here. I think you've gained function. And again, 
It ain't like we've lost the ability to sleep on it. In fact, I think that's one of the most interesting parts of this floor plan. Jayco added like a little bump up in the back of that slide box right there with the sofa option. And it actually causes the whole thing to have a larger flush kind of lay down area. Now it's definitely only good for a little or a big dog, perhaps. That'd be an absolute awesome sleeper for our old Bernese Mountain Dog. Although, holy cow, all the hair she had. Anybody with a burner, I love those dogs to death, but oh my Lord, they shed so much. That thing would just be covered in hair. So maybe not put my burner on there. Keep her on the uh, carpetless uh, floor section back here. But when I said, I feel like maybe they did too much. I almost don't know that this sofa needed those cool bolster armrests. Now, part of what they're doing is they're helping hide the jackknife sofa mechanism. Um, I, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Do you like how they executed this or would you have maybe rather seen something else? And I know I spent a long time talking about a couch, but I've been begging manufacturers to give me a sofa and a free floating table in a simple little bunk model like this for a long time. Now, currently that option is available in the two slide out single axle SLXs. They make a rear bath, no bunk version of this floor plan. Uh, it's not yet available in a no slide model. Would you like to see something like that in a 174 Jayco, a no slide bunkhouse like this? W would that be you know, interesting to you? Let's talk air conditioners. Again, I would really like it if you watch the uh, the other, I say, conventional series uh, version of this video because you'll get to see a different air conditioner and a different fridge. You get to see almost every option available on these. You have the option of going to a 13,000 roof air, but you sacrifice that roof vent up there. What we're looking at over here is the standard side mount 8,000 BTU air conditioner. Now, it's not as powerful as a 13, obviously, but this is a small camper. That is going to be enough to keep up with most people in most areas of the country. I've lived in Georgia where there's 6,000% humidity. I think I would probably want a bigger air conditioner down there. I understand that that doesn't work for everybody. Just know that it's an option. Um, which way would you like to go? Now, the bed down here. It is 80 inches long, which single axle campers rarely have an 80 inch long bed. Caveat though, it is 54 inches wide. So it's a true queen length, not quite a true queen width. Kind of keep that in mind. And I've got a little preventative pro tip for you right here. I love that they gave us this privacy curtain. One of my concerns though, is if you're not paying attention, you can actually pinch it and close it in the slide out. So what I recommend doing is tucking it under the mattress like that when you're not using it because it will basically keep it away from that uh, slide right there so it doesn't get pinched and eaten. Now you have all LED lighting in this and uh, the uh, these used to only be like uh, six foot one or six foot three on the inside. They're uh, uh, six and a half foot tall now, a normal full interior height, which really just dramatically makes a difference here. Also, these are roof solar prepped. So uh, if you get one with the factory solar option or you want to add a charge controller after the fact, that's where you could locate that uh, right there. Now, if I take a seat on the sofa and give you uh, kind of a view from the driver's seat here, it doesn't have an amazing amount of window coverage on the door side, but from the primary seating position, we actually have pretty good viewing. And I tell you what, I'm really thankful Brandon brought me that uh, umbrella. Uh, <laughs> that's, I, I think I'm going to put that to use here. Um, now, the modern farmhouse decor is finally available in the J Flight SLX series. It's always felt to me like this is the camper that should absolutely have it because the lighter colors make it look and feel bigger. And I hope you like it because not only is it now available, it's the only decor <laughs> that they have uh, available in these. Now, if we open this up down below, I think one of the only real shortfalls with this kitchen is just that it has, uh, I call it a lethal dose of no drawers, but there's plenty of room down there. I mean, it's easy to, it's not hard to add a drawer. It's not hard to add like a utensil organizer or anything like that. And another variance that you're going to see between our two videos is in this one, what we're looking at is the larger 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Uh, if you're not familiar with the difference there, it's, it's 12 volt only. So it's not dual power sourced. It doesn't have like a propane backup, but it is completely travel safe because there's no sort of flame aspect to it. It cools roughly about four times faster. Um, just from the factory to here is only about 50 minutes, not even an hour. And those things come in absolutely ice cold. It's, it's terrific. And just to give you an idea of the space that you have, uh, because normally, you know, like this slide box is sized for a dinette. 
I'm trying not to make you motion sick. You're looking straight down right here like a roller coaster. There's like a good foot behind you. And where I think that's cool is if this was a dinette, there'd be storage below the benches. So you could say we've lost the storage, but I could just as easily take my kid's uh, duffel bag or bags or whatever, or, you know, her alone, or if she brings a friend or whatever. Um, because even though we, we, as parents roll our eyes, I, I can't tell my daughter no. So if she wants to bring a friend, I let her. And they have room for their stuff behind the sofa. So it's easily accessible for mom and dad um, without really being in the way because, man, kids eat up a lot of space. Now, the bunks over here in a single axle camper like this, you don't usually get those extra thick bunk mattresses like the big Jacos, like Rockwoods. I put the table over here just to get it out of the way. I'd probably store it behind the sofa most of the time myself. But if you lift this up, you see just like... You don't see like OSB and particle board and beaver puke, stuff like that. That's where the dangler comes in down here, which is literally its name. I'm not making that up. I know I have a bunch of stupid stuff I say. Jayco calls that the dangler. It lets you know that these are 300 pound rated bunks. I'm just kind of, you know, they don't have a privacy curtain. Is it just me though? They don't really feel super exposed. Is that two thirds privacy wall enough? It wouldn't be really hard to find a way to add a little curtain off or something like that. What do you guys think? Now, the bathroom here is very simple. Uh, they figure you're not spending a lot of time here, so they spent the least amount of time there themselves, I think. I do like that you do have a locking bathroom door. I will say, this is fairly fluffy friendly. You've got really good elbow room and really good leg room in front and on both sides of the toilet right there. Um, this is a, uh, a fairly decent tub. Uh, some people prefer showers, some prefer tubs. Cherokee does this kind of half and half thing I call a shub. And there's been a very consistent bit of feedback here, uh, asking Jacob, why is there no shower surround paneling in this shower? Like you have a skylight, obviously see with the benefit of the skylight, even a taller person like me can stand in there. Now, what I can tell you, and this isn't just a story, this is true. When you're done showering, take your towel wipe down the wall, and then open the vents and let this thing air out. It will be fine. But I think a lot of people just prefer a shower surround panel. Here's kind of the, the trick, though, is that if you want to add something, unless you want the price to go up, you got to subtract something else. So I, I guess here's my assignment or a question for you. Pretend for a moment you're the Jayco product manager and you, you identify that people want that shower surround panel but they don't want to pay more for it. Something has to go away. What is the one thing anywhere in this RV, inside or outside, you'd be willing to part with to compensate for the cost of that shower panel? Give and get. What would you give up to get that? I would really like to know. And whether you get the, the sofa, like you're seeing right here, or the dinette, like you see in the other video that I've likely referenced a bajillion times right now, and before we're done, I'll likely have referenced a bajillion and one. You maintain 100% full access to anything and every single thing in this RV without touching the slide button. Thank Mr. Brandon here for bringing me that umbrella so we can finish up our tour today. I just noticed he brought me a Coachman umbrella in our Jayco video. <laughs> anyway, you might ask just by default like, Okay, STX, I thought this was an SLX. The naming conventions are getting a little bit out of hand again. This is, in if we're gonna get absolutely technical and specific, this is a Jayco J Flight SLX STX Edition. There's a lot of letters on this. But if you just call it the STX, there's only one series of Jaycos that has an STX package. Everyone's gonna know what you're talking about. Um, it's that alphabet soup of the RV industry that I love so much. Uh, and in case you're like, what is that package? <laughs> My Jayco buddies, I don't think are gonna appreciate me saying this. It's basically the J Flight Black Label-ish package. It's not exactly like Black Label from the Cherokee Wolf Pups or whatever. It actually kind of incorporates a combination of features you could say from like a, uh, like a Black Label uh, appearance package with kind of a little bit of the Western Edition sort of Baja package. It's actually a little bit of a combination of the two, which is kind of cool, because we haven't had that Baja package available here in the Midwestern production, which feeds about half the country. So kind of cool that we're seeing some expanded opportunities here. All right, so first of all, let's talk towing. It's just over 3,800 pounds dry weight. I think 
Uh, this one maxes out with cargo at uh, about 4,500 pounds, something like that. So let's say you've got like a 5,500 pound tow package SUV or anything larger. You should be able to handle this, not just safely, but with comfort. Now, I mean, <laughs> we gotta talk about the STX package. That's, that's really the whole reason I'm recording this. And I, I love the graphics on the front. It just, everything about this looks very cool to me. Um, obviously, you swap out the conventional uh, aluminum corrugated skin for that awesome looking uh, smooth fiberglass, which is going to make uh, several other benefits here, not just cosmetic, but it will also uh, make the RV more hail resistant because under that fiberglass, there's actually a double layer of Luan laminated to it. So it's, it's actually what I call hybrid construction. It's laminated over top of a stick built skeleton. I wanna make that clear too. When you see fiberglass, you almost automatically associate it with um, aluminum, right? You, you assume an aluminum frame. This is still a stick-built camper, which is one of the reasons when you go to the STX fiberglass package, you are actually gaining a little bit of weight. Um, another thing you might notice on the front there, this has a larger propane tank. When you go to the STX package, you're actually picking up 50% uh, more propane going from a 20-pound bottle to a 30. And you know what? I got to get you up close and personal on this. These always have Goodyear tires, but when you go to STX, they flip the axle to give you more ground clearance, and then you go to a uh, actually a Goodyear Wrangler truck tire, not even Goodyear Endurance. Um, that is something that they actually do uh, very similarly to the um, J Feather Micros, which are <laughs> a chunk more money than one of these. And don't get me wrong, uh, those things are awesome in their own respects, but you know, a little bit different. And here's something you can't see for two reasons. One, it's under the camper, but a larger freshwater tank comes equipped on the STX package. Uh, the other thing is you can't see it because on the STX package, you're getting an enclosed underbelly, which really helps uh, offer some extra protection there. Now, uh, that smooth skin and the underbelly are actually two potential uh, beneficial towing factors, which sounds a little wacky, but because everything has been smoothed out and there's less wind resistance, it does tend to slipstream down the road a little bit better. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you this thing has magically been aerodynamically optimized uh, by any stretch. Now, of course, we uh, we still have the J-Smart safety lighting. We are rear and side camera ready. You see all the windows are nice and tinted. That water heater, by the way, it, I don't know about you guys. Uh, I, I tend to be the one who's willing to to fall on my sword and, and uh, take the last shower, which usually means in the camper I get the cold shower. But in a camper like this, it's gas and electric and uh, auto ignition and fast recharge, which basically means this thing can get just under 18 gallons of hot water per hour. Another thing that's easy to miss, and frankly, I would really like to see this on the conventional series, not just as part of the STX package upgrade, is four corner power, or not power, I'm sorry, four corner manual stabilizer jacks uh, instead of just rears. So this is going to get you some more stability as well. Um, the, uh, you might also notice those, uh, the, the fenders that kind of stick out there because this is on a bigger tire, they actually had to, uh, you know, give you a little bit of a fender flare that sticks out. So the body's seven foot wide, I guess side to side, this is probably going to measure closer to like seven and a half, uh, foot wide, something like that. But, uh, the body's still seven foot wide. Oh, look at that sunshine come out, man. That's good looking. So once again, let me know what you think about that little thing. Uh, again, we pick up some weight and we pick up some cost when we go to the STX edition like this, but I think the eye appeal really speaks for itself. And what do you think about that sofa in the slide out? Do you, uh, you think they nailed it? You think they failed it? Something in between? And I'm always open to more feedback, anything you're willing to share. Uh, if you're curious about pricing and availability, I'll leave you a link for that in the video description. So whether you're curious or whether you're serious, it's only a click away. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Remember to subscribe, everyone.